just for these followers. I am praying for everyone else who will have faith because of what my followers will say about me. I want all of them to be one with each other, just as I am one with you and you are one with me. I also want them to be one with us. Then the people of this world will believe that you sent me. Filled. A heart 
lean on I need your light to help me find my place in this world my place in this world so happy to be here we um, last year when we were here we um, were going to the we were on our way to the Philippines um, uh, before we went and we went to the Philippines and um, that that song is very important for us because um, we really found a place there and all of us in our in our life journeys you know there are times in our lives when we feel like okay where am I where is my place you know where really where is my place are we you know we our lives are like chapters, you know. If, if anybody's had the creating a life that matters training, you know that your life is divided into chapters of your life. And when you get to the end of a chapter, it's like you have to start all over again. Where is your place? Where is your place? And so that song really means a lot to us. And, and, and what we experience in the Philippines um, means a lot. We're going to uh, have a uh, reading from a book called Daring Greatly. And then we're going to show you some pictures um, from our trip to the Philippines. So. Today's contemporary reading is from Daring Greatly, How the Courage to be Vulnerable Transforms the Way We Live, Love, Parent, and Lead, by Dr. Brene Brown. Vulnerability is the birthplace of love, belonging, joy, courage, empathy, and creativity. It is the source of hope, empathy, accountability, and authenticity. If we want greater clarity in our purpose or deeper and more meaningful spiritual lives, vulnerability is the path. Shame, on the other hand, is highly correlated with addiction, violence, aggression, depression, eating disorders, and bullying, 
and erodes our courage. Daring greatly is not about winning or losing. It's about courage. In a world where scarcity and shame dominate and feeling afraid has become second nature, vulnerability is subversive, uncomfortable. It is even a little dangerous at times. And without question, putting ourselves out there means there is far greater risk of feeling hurt. But as I look back on my own life and what daring greatly has meant to me, I can honestly say that nothing is as uncomfortable, dangerous, and hurtful as believing that I'm standing on the outside of my life, looking in and wondering, what would it be like if I had the courage to show up and let myself be seen. That's a powerful statement. How many of us have been in, in, at times in our lives on the outside looking in, even though we thought we had figured it out? Then all of a sudden we find ourselves on the outside looking in. What am I going to do? And then the part about shame and all of, the, all of the list of things that it brings about. Most of us, I think, probably live our lives thinking that we, oh, we're fine. We don't have shame or whatever. Or we just have our ordinary lives when we see that. Um, that shame is the opposite of vulnerability and daring greatly. Um, w the people that we met in the Philippines, children and adults, they dare greatly every day. They poured our hearts out to us as we visited. We watched them um, and spoke with them, and they dare greatly every day. And they are so willing to lose their shame and want to find a place, a home. That is MCC. Um, where they believe. So um, we had made a trip to a school that MCC Quezon City uh, supports um, and it is a school for special needs children or at least a section of it is uh, special needs children and uh, we have our or they did their own backpack campaign where we uh, we supplied school supplies for the kids. I don't really recall how many backpacks they had, but um, seventy or eighty. Yeah, right. Um, so this is this is one of the the photos of uh, our outreach efforts in in the Philippines, and that's the back of the MCC shirt um, that they wear. Uh, and these are just uh, some of the folks that work in the church uh, who are I should say who volunteer for the church outreach. Um, opportunity where it says acceptance and love prevail and that is really what they are trying to impart on the children and the faculty of that school and there's Jane on the left <laughs> and Reverend okay. Stedney on the right I'm the one taking pictures obviously uh, yes so there's a, and that's <laughs> Pastor Kakai who was also at the general conference and uh, a lot of people were very excited to see the group a lot of the parents were there as well the teachers so it was a great opportunity for us to see MCC being the hands and feet and the heart of Christ and these are just some of the children uh, that we worked with they did a performance for us. Um, this is a section of children who are um, visually impaired. And what we found was that um, actually, if they're just, uh, when they're in second or third grade, if they're just behind, if they've fallen behind for any reason, they pretty much automatically get pa placed in this class. So there were students I noticed there who probably just needed eye surgery or glasses. And that was it. Um, and it was about 95 degrees and very humid. <laughs> and they were sitting there. Mm -hmm. The woman um, with the glasses hanging from her shirt is the principal of that school. Yeah, that was actually the best. Uh, that's why I took that picture. It says, with eyes that can see special things, ears that can hear special words, minds that create special thoughts. And that pretty much embodies this group of children because whether we, we, we see them as special needs, but really when we saw them, we were touched just by their presence, that they were happy. They didn't know that we saw them as special needs kids. They just saw that people were visiting them and had nice things and uh, gifts for them, and they were happy. That was, not, that was not an issue for them. They were just happy that they were being visited and blessed by these gifts that we brought to them.
this was the time when they were getting ready to perform a special number for us. They're actually in, they're actually in a hallway because there's no room. There's no classroom room. So yeah. they're out in a hallway. This is Reverend Stedney Phillips. She's the chair of the Asian Pacific Islander Initiative in MCC. And she travels uh, to the Philippines yearly and works with their five groups, five MCC groups um, in the Philippines, um, two major churches in the Manila area, and then three other home groups in the provinces, the outside areas. And all five groups came and met with us, got together with us. Then they provided lunch for us. Yes. Um, I took a picture of this, uh, not just to make your mouths water, but actually there is, a, there is a very moving story behind this picture, and that is the teachers, the cost of living is very um, low in the Philippines. And so the teachers actually saved some of their salary to be able to provide food for the visitors. Um, and they were very excited. They made sandwiches, they made spaghetti um, from their salary, which, you know, um, it was very challenging for them on their own, but they were very happy to be able to provide. We said, we know, it's okay, we didn't have, but they, they insisted, they wanted to provide a meal for us, for the work that we did. And um, it was just very moving that they would um, you know, put aside some money that they saved just to be able to provide food for the company. So it was really, it was very uh, generous of them and hospitable. Tell them even if they don't believe you just tell them even if Jordan. 
ordinary people. God uses people just like me and you who are willing to do as God commands. God uses people who will give their all. So when I was growing up, I was uh, in the church all the time. I was a church rat, a church mouse, whatever you want to call it. I was always singing in the church, and my parents were choir members, and we were there all the time. And we used to see missionaries come through on Sunday nights. I don't know if any of you had that experience. Right? Sunday night, missionary night. And they would come through and talk about having been to other countries and all of that. And I got a big stereotype about what missionaries were. So I knew that they, they basically... As I grew up, I realized that they basically would um, proselytize and colonize, perhaps, <laughs> to our American Christian way of doing church in other countries. And so I never fashioned, or I will always imagine myself a singer and a player, piano player in the church, but never a missionary. And so um, having the experience, once I got over there, not only did I realize that I was doing missionary work in the best and truest sense of the word. Um, but also, I realized that we do missionary work all the time. That was sort of global, on a global level, I got to do that. But you do it on a global level. Because when I was over there, I could see many of your faces. The lady that paid for this piano, <laughs> right? Reverend Colleen, all of you, as I do that. And as I think further, I realize that we do missionary work every day. Yesterday I was in the pool with some children who are happy and content because of some missionaries in this church who choose to be foster parents. You see? So we do that missionary work all the time, every day. Um, and when we give of our... our time, our money, um, to do it globally or locally, even anyway, um, we, bring, we bring that message of God. We bring justice, God's justice and God's grace um, to the world. And that's what MCC is really about. That's right. Can, so, we, can we have that slide back up, please, for the kids? So that you will be reminded, we talked about global... Um, missionary work, but really, like uh, as Jane said, it doesn't. St it's it it's it starts from here. We learn to be missionaries within our own churches, and then it resonates outside. And so these are just some of the the people that we help that actually help us back. And it takes all of us to be able to help them, all of us to commit to them. Right. And, and, and make ourselves available. See you. 
so that you can fill me up. Now I'm free and I just want to be more available to you. empty. That's the old-fashioned black gospel way of saying, I'm going to be vulnerable. Right. My storage is empty. I'm available to you. And so we want to just thank you again for um, supporting us on this ministry and for being um, the, the, the compassionate MCC that you are. And we have a call for you. We have a call to action for you. So five MCCs, th two uh, in actual church buildings, although um, they, they really struggle there. So we did a leadership retreat. That's the Reverend Elder Ken Martin in the chair. Um, and w these are some of the people from the five MCCs. Go. Right. Um, the, the second man to the left is actually Pastor Egai from MCC Makati. Uh, the one on the left and the right of Jane are also our pastors of the Baguio, home group the home. churches. No, there, there are some of the up and coming churches. There's about six or seven people who come to each of their locations. And of course, this is the uh, women's retreat that we facilitated with Reverend Stedney. Um, Jane, do you want to speak about uh, the, the women's group? Yes, you know, in, in the Philippines, um, the women um, of the church, there are more men than women in the church. The women um, feel, are, are not used to seeing women in leadership in church, having leadership roles in church, because they come from a background where they are supposed to be silent and quiet and no leadership roles. So for us to come in and uh, we did a whole day long workshop, we taught about some women in the Bible, we kind of queered them up a little bit. We told story, told our stories, talked about, you know, talked about being the music director of Founders MCC and they were just blown away and, and we had a great time and then they told, the, they talked, they told their stories and as they, as we told our stories together, we weaved together a quilt. So what you see on the, on the ground is a, a strip quilt that we weaved as each one of us presented our stories and it was ama an amazing day and and I could tell in the services the following Sunday that, that the women were 
they were gearing up to get loud. <laughs> and we now have a pastoral leader of one, a, a female pastoral leader um, of the biggest church, uh, MCC Kisson City. And that is the lady with the purple scarf. She's in seminary. She's a pastoral leader, Kakai, a young girl. She's about 22, 23. So she's, she, she is rising up to do some leadership. And um, she's actually in LA visiting right now. Um, she was able to come to General Conference thanks to the Be a Gem um, contributions and um, is in LA. And so, yeah, it was a wonderful day with all of those people, all those lovely ladies. Hmm. So this song is for you. This is our message for you. If you hear this message wherever you stand, call it every woman, call it every man, with a generation can afford to wait. Just started yesterday, we're already late. We've been looking for a song to sing. Search for a melody, search for someone to lead. We've been looking for the world to change. If you feel the same, go on and say if you're out there. Sing along with me if you're out there. Say it loud if you're out there. Tomorrow started now. Now, now. No more broken promises. No more call to war. Unless it's love and peace that we're really fighting for. this means? All these pioneers who blazed the way, all these veterans cheering us on. 
It means we'd better get on with it. Strip down, start running, and never quit. No extra spiritual fat, no parasitic sins. Keep your eyes on Jesus, who both began and finished this race we're in. Study how he did it, because he never, never lost sight of where he was headed. That exhilarating finish in and with God, he could put up with anything along the way. Cross, shame, whatever. And now he's there in the place of honor, right alongside God. When you find yourselves flagging in your faith, go over that story again and again, item by item that long litany of hostility he plowed through, that will shoot adrenaline into your souls. Right. Are you out there? Are you finding your place, your calling, your individual call to serve to make a difference in the world? So that's the deal. You've heard it sung. We have played a role in their ministry, but the challenge is for each of us also to have our own ministry, yes? And then together we have a ministry. Groups of us have ministry in the church, outside of the church, as a community of faith, the larger MCC, and then all people of faith. So individually, we run the race. And the world needs us. Did you hear that? It's already late. Who are the groups that we're called to speak to? Today we've celebrated these people in the Philippines, the churches in the Philippines, and these children in this special needs school. And we've all also celebrated the transgender ministry that this church is doing. Two groups we've celebrated. And we should celebrate that we have been part of and are part of ministry. Yes? yes. And there's more to do. So that a young teen doesn't have to stand and say, I'm the only teen in my church. Because what's true in L.A. is true in greater Dallas. Right, Karen? <laughs> right. We had them get together. Amen? That's ministry. Even two people who feel alone in their context, connecting is important. What's God calling you to do? What's God calling us to do? Are you ready to be vulnerable and take a risk and step out? Yes. If you want to build your faith, I'm going to encourage you to be here over the next six weeks. Because right. we're going to be under construction. All right. Individually under construction. Looking at what God's building in you so that we can live our faith in the world and continue to make a difference. Amen.